Okay, welcome everybody. Patriot are delighted that the last webinar of our decade is with our latest partner, announced very recently, Canvas Flow, exploring how our partnership will enable publishers to generate the next uh, generation of mobile optimized editions. If you've got any audio issues at this point, please message us using the GoToWebinar panel, which is also where you can ask questions throughout, and we'll answer those questions at the end. We've also got two polls and a couple of demonstrations during the webinar, so that'll be great for you to get involved in and feedback on. So without further ado, we'll get stuck into the main content of the webinar. So first off, we'll do some introductions. I'm Ben Edwards. I'm the business development director here at PageSuite. What that means is I get to work with publishers big and small across the world, mainly discussing how digital and mobile products can help customer acquisition and retention when it comes to your subscription strategies, but also driving digital advertising and increasingly engaging new products, creating spin-off brands and new apps like puzzles, games and OTT apps across the range of devices and platforms. Hi, I'm Ben Holmes. I'm lead developer here at PageSuite on the server side. And I've uh, worked quite closely with um, Canvas Flow, specifically Gareth, in uh, the integration we've been doing. Hi, everybody. My name is Christian Price. Uh, I look after sales and marketing at Canvas Flow. Uh, I have a publisher background, so, and uh, in recent years, I've kind of moved over to various digital platforms um, and been at Canvas Flow for just over a year. And hopefully, that gives me a good insight into the journey that a lot of publishers and brands face when moving from print to digital. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Gareth Jones, um, co founder at Canvas Flow, uh, essentially responsible for uh, development of the products, um, talking to customers, customer success, really to understand how uh, customers and clients are using the tools uh, to create the content um, for their requirements. So, yeah, I'm really pleased to be here this afternoon. Uh, cheers, guys. Okay, so what have we got coming up in the webinar? We've got a overview of what's been happening in the industry and um, we'll all be having a little chat about some of the trends that we're seeing and then we'll be passing over uh, to the Camflow guys and they'll be talking a bit about what the product enables you to do and then providing a nice demonstration and then Ben will be doing a demonstration of how that interacts with PageSuite and then finally we'll all be um, putting our opinions into the summary and answering all of your questions and answers that come in during the webinar. Okay, so who are we? Most people on the webinar um, should be familiar to a point with one or either of us, but just to round it off, we've got a little bit of an introductory piece. So, Patriot are a digital mobile publishing solutions provider. We deliver best in class digital editions, live news, and Netflix style multi title kiosk products. We've also got a range of custom projects uh, and apps utilizing our media expertise, which are websites and also more custom iOS and Android applications too. Thousands of magazines and newspapers across the world, big groups right through to small independents utilize our solutions on a daily basis. They include magazines and newspapers in almost every corner of the planet. We're a truly 24 seven, 365 day a year business. So we support you all fully, all day, every day. And that really covers the global nature of our clients um, that are on every continent and how news media operates. Almost every week now, our development team will deliver a third party integration too. So uh, with partners delivering interactive puzzles, push notifications, paywalls, metering, and most recently for optimized content, Canvas Flow. Thanks, Ben. Um, Christian again here. Uh, so Canvas Flow essentially is a rapid mobile content authoring platform. And what we like to think that we really understand is that our customers have content in various different sources. That might be InDesign, it might be a CMS, it might be web. And what they really need to be able to do is deliver that in the best possible reader experience to all of their channels where their, where their readers uh, choose to consume that content. So that could be web, it could be apps, it could be social, it could be email, or, or it could be CMS, and it could be more. There's you know, um, a new channels proliferating all the time, and we integrate those as and when they become available uh, and, and uh, open up access to those for our customers. So Canvas Flow really sits at the heart of that workflow Kind of joining the dots and just giving our customers you know 100 percent control over those processes so we're really excited to be here today to um, um to focus on on apps and in particular obviously the page suite apps we have this great new integration um, with our partners here at page suite so we'll we'll be concentrating on on that today i just wanted to give you a kind of uh, insight into the kind of people that are using canvas flow 
Um, and you can see that we're, we're dealing with diverse kind of brands and publishers from uh, Swarovski, Danone, Nikon, Smithsonian Institute, RBI and Airbus, to name just a few. Nice. So brands as well as more traditional B2B and B2C publishers as well. Yeah, absolutely. Re yeah. Relevant to anybody creating any kind of content, really. Cool. So this, we always do this with our webinars, which is a bit of a state of the industry, what's happening in the here and now. So we're rolling into 20. 20 uh, and despite the last decade almost being full exclusively of digital edition doubters we're still here and are extremely popular and we've also got our new optimized platform edition which is the main integration we've got with canvas flow to take to take that to the next level and what that will enable publishers to be able to do is deliver a finishable mobile and tablet experience which is now in a much more efficient and affordable way to do that to enable you to drive retention or increase paid for subscriptions or just higher engagement digital solutions than ever before. So right at this time of year, we've got uh, anticipated new device sales at Christmas and gifting subscription opportunities are a really big focus for newspapers and magazine publishers that we're working with. There's been a lot of interest in publishers moving and consolidating their digital solutions into one big app. So for years, we've seen brands launch separate news apps that are uh, different to their digital edition product, but now because they're increasingly looking at driving bundled subscriptions and higher usage volumes by combining the two, maybe utilizing our SDK for instance, um, you can actually have a digital edition within your in-house built apps. There's also been plenty of merger and acquisition and as asset sale activity. Most recently in North America, you've got the Gannett and Gatehouse deal, uh, and there's always speculation around another other groups. Slightly challenging side of things is there's not many new title launches or growth stories. The better ones I'm seeing are people like The Athletic, Community Impact and Washington Post who are still heavily investing in the technology side as well as the journalism. And just this week I actually saw the CEO of NewsQuest pressing here in the UK about what's going to be the response to the Cairn Cross Review and um, which if you're in regional publishing is what we're hotly anticipating some news on as well. Certainly, I don't know if you guys find this as well, but within the regional and national news brand and the broader market for magazines, margins face yet more pressure, particularly under the advertising duress of Google and Facebook. But that said, one advantage we still have here in publishing is that most publishers have tens if not hundreds of years worth of valuable archive and that content we're finding can appeal to a huge range um, of uh, engaged readers, so people like researchers and history nuts on one side Row it through to schools, colleges, and anyone who's got a connection with a place, time, or interest. Most recently, we've seen people like big brands like Newsday in North America, through to smaller independent publishers like Bayless, utilizing our solutions to create compelling, um, easily accessible, and well marketed archive. Um, we also do our little trends analysis as well. And what we're seeing at the market in from the European side is clients are increasingly seeing uh, mobile editions becoming popular. Over 50% of our European clients are experiencing digital edition traffic through mobile, 30% on tablet. The US is slightly lower because there's still more predominant usage of the web and therefore a desktop experience, but still if you combine mobile and tablet it's about 60 to 70%. One of the reasons why it's great to work with people like Canvas Flow is we're also seeing how um, the likes of Adobe DPS, Mag Plus, and other of these vendors that emerged during the last five or six years that promised so much in terms of interactive digital editions, but are increasingly what well, were increasingly very labor intensive, um, is that we've got solutions like this that can allow brands to actually um, reduce the cost and resource requirements of newsrooms and designers and allow brands to get more closely aligned with delivering a stronger return on investment. The positive outcome that we've seen from brands investing in some form of digital edition product, whether it be a straightforward replica or something more interactive, is that it has built up a paid for digital audience and now there's an appreciation of those digital editions. I know you mentioned that you've been working a little bit with associations and they actually see digital diversions as a value add to enhance their membership offering, is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've, um, we've seen some interesting opportunities with associations and also I think, and you touched on it Ben, um, uh, with archive or evergreen content you know we're seeing kind of huge opportunities there for people where lots of publishers are sitting on these kind of huge reservoirs of content and they don't know really what to do with it or how to monetize it yeah and digital 
it all represents a, a, an amazing opportunity for them to capitalize on that. So yeah. So you could actually use Canvas Flow to go into some archive content if you've still yeah. got the internet. Yeah, zone. absolutely. Amazing. We make it really simple for you to get your content into Canvas Flow. You know, that's one of the main features of it. So wherever mm -hmm. that content resides, we get it in there. Then you can push out to whichever channels you want to connect with your audience. No, so I feel like this year and going into 2020, we're reaching that inflection point where publishers can op create optimized editions much more efficiently than they've been able to do and then publish really successfully across all of the different platforms web apps websites and social media too that enables you to create something truly optimized and that and it, as it's still in an edition format is where it resonates most strongly with a place of paid for content or engaging content with those types of uh, readers that are either digital natives or are wanting to consume more of your content on those devices whilst not to labor the point, but we want to stress this, cutting the number of uh, production hours required and allowing you to maximize your content. Okay, so what can you do with Canvas Flow? Uh, okay, great. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll shortly hand you over to Gareth for a deeper dive um, with the demo of Canvas Flow. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on a few um, ideas of what you can do for Canvas Flow and what Canvas Flow can do for you. So starting off with number one, um, rapidly creating uh, fully responsive editions. Uh, you know, what do we mean by that and by no impact to existing workflows? Well, Canvas Flow dovetails really nicely with all of your existing systems. So we can integrate with various different systems you might have in place. But more importantly, we don't require your editorial teams to re-engineer any of their workflows in order for, to make it simple for them um, um, to get their content into Canvas Flow. Um, and experience the benefits of that. Um, we also have an InDesign plugin as well, so that anybody that uh, has a predominantly kind of print-based workflow and their content's coming from InDesign, we make it really simple for you to get that content into Canvas Flow, um, and we can automate that process as well. So you know you're rapidly finding your content in Canvas Flow, where it's in an environment that um, you can enhance it, you can deliver it to whichever channel um, um, you need to. We're also seeing uh, vast amounts of time being saved as well, production time um, and content creation time because your uh, workflows are streamlined, uh, which enables your designers to really concentrate on what they do best, and that is creating really strong reader experiences and actually doing work that they enjoy more as well, which is creating these strong reader experiences that are gonna result in much deeper engagement with your audience. Um, also the opportunity to grow audience as well because um, your content once created in Canvas Flow is going to look fantastic across all of the channels that you choose to deliver it and we really put that control into your hands as well because you know you, you, you might be launching a web today but uh, an app today sorry but you know you might want to publish to web in the future or you might want to include some social channels in there and the choice is really yours so we give you kind of 100% flexibility and creative control over that process. So I know at the moment we've talked a little bit, you've, you've got um, B2C magazines using you, B2B magazines, but there's also opportunities for native content providers, right? You're saying about either through an agency or even directly with the brand themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're seeing a, a lot more of that as well, where um, um, yeah, on, on the brand direct side of, of the business, you know, people are able to kind of create content. And it's just about giving people that kind of, you, you know, the creative control of once their content is in Canvas Flow, they're really in charge of where that's delivered. Um, and the great thing that we do as well is that once your content is in Canvas Flow, the best way to think about it is that it's stored as structured content and it's kind of in this agnostic form where it's fully optimized to be able to be delivered to whichever channel you want it to go, you know. I think the other thing to add there is um, that the nature of the Canvas Flow uh, system makes it very easy to get up to speed. There's no uh, sort of significant training. Uh, it's very quickly to, very quick to pick up and you can become proficient with it in quite literally a few hours. So you can, you can try out new ideas and push those um, ideas to, to production very, very quickly. And that's some of the USBs. Yeah, no developers required at all. But, yeah. you know, if you do have that resource as well, you know, you can access parts of it. You can open up the CSS and, and play around with that as well. So, again, you know, that um, demonstrates the kind of flexibility of, of, of the platform as well. And a large percentage of our uh, customers are newspapers as well. We've been touching on actually some of the use cases that potentially they could start exploring in the digital world. So spin-off brands. Uh, 
and, yeah, or maybe with digest yeah. and things like that. Sure, you you yeah. see an opportunity there? Yeah, more kind of bite-sized pieces of content that, you know, if you, especially uh, with, with newsprint and newspapers, um, you know, the, the supplements are coming out at various different frequencies. So yeah. to be able to kind of aggregate that together and deliver a real kind of bite-sized piece of information on a weekly basis or something that's a bit more tangible to people, yeah. then, you know, that's, that's a great opportunity as well. Perfect. Great stuff. So, so, so hopefully a few valid reasons there for people to uh, consider Canvas Flow. Um, so I think, yeah, good time now to hand you over to uh, our co-founder, Gareth, who will, will do a deep, deeper dive with the uh, demo. Right. Cheers, Christian. Right. Good afternoon again, everybody. Um, can I just... Uh, yes, thank you very much. <coughs> Yeah, so as um, Christian has, has mentioned um, in the last few minutes, Canvas Flow is essentially a, um, a rapid content authoring platform that allows you to create content uh, in a responsive form. Um, you, can, you can use Canvas Flow, which many of our clients do, to build um, essentially from scratch through templates uh, and other things like that um, from within the browser. Or um, uh, more recently, we're allowing content to be pushed in from these external sources so um, CMS systems JSON feeds uh, WordPress systems and most recently uh, in design plugins so it's about repurposing content so just because we're limited on time today what I'm going to demonstrate is pushing some content from InDesign and we're going to look at it in canvas flow do some manipulation and then we're going to push that out to the page suites and just sort of show the end-to-end -end, um, workflow essentially so no pressure, but a live demonstration. No yet. pressure, but a live demonstration, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, how we like to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start with, um, I'm going to open up an InDesign file here. Just going to minimize this. Um, and what we've got here is a 14-page uh, InDesign print-first um, document. And with the Canvas Flow plugin, um, what we're going to do is we're going to publish this. Well, we're going to publish a section of this. So we've built up a few of the pages. We're going to push this across to Canvas Flow. We're just going to select. So we're going to work with this article down at the bottom, this, this purple one here. Um, so we're just going to publish pages four to five. We're going to send it across to our publication. We're going to apply a style. It's something we're going to talk about in a second. And the rest of it we're going to leave. So let's push this across. Essentially, what, what Canvas Flow is doing here is taking the, the document, it's parsing it, it's working out the structure and the order of the flow. Uh, it's also optimizing the images, which is something that's really important. Um, obviously, that transition from print first to web um, requires uh, sort of heavy optimization of images. And typically, we're seeing um, sort of reduction from sort of 2 gig down to 10, 15 meg. Um, so that's processed that file. I'm going to do now is jump across into the Canvas Flow platform. Here's the Insights magazine. And if we just scroll down, you should see the demo magazine um, article. So we're going to jump uh, into here <coughs> and take a look uh, as how Canvas Flow has essentially transformed this. Give it a second to load. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is uh, the canvas in the center. So this is where your content has been um, published and pushed across. Uh, three main things to notice. First of all, is this content is um, completely uh, interactable. Um, it's been converted. We're not just dropping in uh, sort of an iframe. So you're, you've got full control over this content. And what we mean by that is essentially we can start to um, work with this content and uh, move this content around, restructure it. Uh, you can do this by simply picking up the elements, and you can see that the uh, these drop zones, as we call it, allow you to manipulate the location of this. And we can also move things up and down on the on the vertical axis. Um, <clears throat> we also have, uh, if we look up at the top here, uh, ability to add different components. So you can add more uh, text components in, for example. We can add rich media. Um, components, images, galleries, videos. I'm going to touch again on that in a second. Um, we can also build snippets as well. Snippets are a, a sort of small templates which allow you to add quickly add um, sort of uh, style to the to the article itself. So we've got a special feature. This is a feature page. Um, and what you can see here is very quickly we've got a good representation of the InDesign file we've been working with. 
The second thing to notice is the, the environment here is fully responsive. So we can actually preview how this content looks in a vertical uh, horizontal edition. And we can preview that again before you're publishing out. So you get a real feel for how that content is going to look uh, on the fly. And you can actually again build in this environment. If we come out and take a look at the desktop, we can see down here at the bottom that this content here is running the full length of the page. Works well on tablet, not so not so well on a on a, on a desktop. Sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we can do is because Canvas, again, it's it's not making intelligent decisions about content. It's it's worked out that this is sitting in a column. It's going to give us the option here to come in and actually specify how we want to output this or display this content. So if we convert this to a multipol, we're going to be able to take advantage um, of that larger real estate. Um, but if we come down to the phone again, that's all going to collapse. So you've got complete responsive, optimized content in just a few seconds. And there's a bit of artificial intelligence in there as well, because it's almost telling, giving you a suggestion as to what you could potentially do. Sure. So it's, it's making sort of a, an educated decision yeah. on where the content sits, um, but it's then giving you the freedom to manipulate that content in any way, edit it. Uh, yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a whole range of ways to sort of add value to that, that content there. Just to finish this one off, um, we can again use an inline styling. Um, we're going to touch on how uh, styling is applied shortly. Um, we come down to the color palette here, and this is a customizable color palette. So this can stay sort of allowed to stay on brand in terms of your colors that can all be set up. Um, okay, so we've got everything in place. We're happy with that. What we're going to do is we're going to save this. Let's just grab this because we're going to give it a title. Just copy this. And I'm going to jump back out to the article manager. So essentially, we've gone in, we've manipulated the content, we've um, moved a few things around. What we now need to do is push this out to page. So if I come in here, first of all, I'm going to give it a name. It takes um, by default the name of the headline uh, of the actual InDesign file it's publishing. Uh, right, okay. So you can keep track if you're publishing many different articles. Uh, so I'm going to keep track of that. We can also come in here, change the style, or add a thumbnail. The great thing about Page Suite system is it's going to generate those thumbnails for you. So we're not going to worry about that. So we can click update. It's going to make that change. And then what we're going to do is publish it. So this is essentially making this eligible. So when it's pushed to Page Suite, it's eligible to be displayed in, in the edition. So here it is at the bottom. It's a feature, so I think sitting at the bottom doesn't really do it justice. Let's move it up back to where it sat in the original flow, just under contents. And then once we're happy with uh, that there, we can, if I move this out of the way, hit publish here. And that's going to essentially wrap this entire edition up. It's going to send it across to the page suite platform, uh, and that's going to start processing. That's going to take, it's, it's, it's actually very quick indeed, but it's going to take a minute or so. Just, just in the background, what I want to do is just jump in and show you a couple of other features of Canvas yeah. Flow of the editor, just give you a feel for some of the other things you can do. Yeah. So if we jump back into this article. It's allowed. <clears throat> we can see it up here at the top. So that's the article we've been working on. We can now switch to see some of the other articles um, in this edition. Uh, we'll take a look at this Millennials one. So again, a really nice uh, visual way to um, work with your content. You can really get a look and feel for how this, this works. So again, this is an article. If we flip back to the InDesign, come down here, this has been pushed previously across from InDesign. And what I want to do here is just give you a feel for how we can add some value to this. So great looking article, everything's formatted, it's editable, but here we have an image. Now, given that it's uh, regarding millennials uh, and we can push out to uh, Page Suite's digital platform, I think it, it doesn't really do it justice to just being an image. So what we can do over here is uh, come in and replace this with a, or enrich this with another media component. So what I've grabbed, I'm gonna add an infogram just because it's, uh, it's about millennials there. That kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so let's uh, so grab an infogram. We're going to bring this in again. You're going to see this these drop zones. So you're eligible to put it any of these places. It will populate it. In this case, I'm going to replace this image. I'm going to drop this infogram in here, and simply click on it. When you click on a component, you have the ability to customize that. In this case, I'm going to apply this, and here you've got a really nice um, visual uh, representation of, of the data. 
Um, I'm going to come back to that in a second. As we've added that in, we've now got some space down here at the bottom. Um, so I think, again, given the um, type of content, let's drop a video in here. Um, Canvas Flow supports a number of different platforms, so YouTube, Vimeo, Vidyard, a uh, heap of others. Uh, so if you just grab the URL, um, paste it in here. And again, we can support offline video and MP3 pause if you don't want to stream. Uh, we can apply this, and then you've got to uh, enrich that content in just Great. a few seconds. So that's taken a print piece of content, yeah. let's push it across. We've got some infographics in there, we've got video in there. And then if we switch into the preview, again, we can look at this on a device, this becomes um, interactable. Very nice. Can actually interact with this. Let's come down, let's take a look at that video. Um, Why so again, I we're ready to publish that across, but I'm just getting a nod from Ben that um, it looks like the um, edition's finished publishing. Yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna pass you across. Great, thank you very thank much. You. Right, so if we open up this tab, yeah. we can have a look at um, the page suite edition product. So here, We've got uh, the edition that Gareth just made for us. Um, what you see in here is the actual archive for the for the uh, edition app. And up top, we've got the um, edition that's just green, been created, and then below are a couple of other um, editions from the archive. So we can jump straight into into the edition that's just been made. And you'll see in here the front page of the the Insights magazine. Um, what you'll notice is it's exactly the same uh, look and feel as was created in Canvas Flow. And it's just been ported across into the page suite system. Um, one thing I think is probably also worth noting is the three columns that Gareth was looking at earlier. They're uh, obviously on desktop, you're using all three columns, but if you jump over to mobile view here, we've got an example that turns that into a, into a single column. Um, it's already all in there for you. Uh, and when we come out, it's also worth noting this product's got supports the the standard page week features so it has bookmarks search and uh, offline reading mode and then um, we can come back into the archive and we can also have a look at um, sort of how the how the canvas flow edition sits alongside other products so like i said this is the archive for canvas flow we've got a couple of other tabs up here and we've got the original replica as a pdf here this is probably something <coughs> that most of you are familiar with with uh, page suite so this is the standard um, HTML5 radius in here. So this is that original content, that original PDF that's then uh, just displayed on uh, in, the, in the HTML5 reader. So essentially with addition, both on web and an apps, you can offer one subset of users, maybe an older demographic who are more um, appreciative of the e-paper mm -hmm. that part, and then the younger demographic who want something more interactive, more intuitive. All like, what exactly the same content, yep. but in a truly optimized design and format. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And you can put those; they can sit both alongside one another. Nice. Um, I think that's probably from the Canvas Flow perspective. That's probably uh, that's probably that. But it's also worth noting that that can sit alongside our new product as well, which is the addition, which is the addition product. This is we see this more as a, a newspaper um, style. So here we've got um, we've taken feeds from a newspaper. We're combining it with templates here and we're just pushing that content in so there's i guess there's two ways you can look at this you can either look at it from the canvas flow perspective which is um designing down to the sort of infinite level of design that you can really make all your customizations and then on the other side on the flip side you can then also have um a fully automated approach which will just be a combination of feeds and templates which is just reusing feed content um, and sort of making it more interactive and um, essentially adding a, an extra level of style to it. Again, all three of these, all three of these products that we're showing you here support standard page suite, um, standard page suite features. So they've all got offline bookmarking and uh, and search abilities as well. I guess the use case is coming to a little bit more visually recognizable when you actually see it in front of you. So when we're talking earlier about a newspaper publisher, they might not have the time on a daily basis to course, curate yeah. something or um, truly opt, uh, truly utilize Canvas Flow, but you could easily take the supplements or a weekly digest and yep. utilize Canvas Flow. You see how easy and quick it is to actually go from something that's very print centric and InDesign into Canvas Flow and in, in an instant is transformed. You've got these options to have single column, triple column, interactivity, but so from a customer perspective, all within their same product, you can have something based like a replica, something like an addition, and also these more optimized 
yeah, of course. Well. And yeah, they all sit alongside one another. So yeah, as you said, Ben, you could have you know a, a canvas flow supplement. You could have obviously on one day, and then you could have an addition that ran every day, just pulling in from your feed content. And that sort of just enriches the whole the whole product, really. Yeah, so I think it's worth noting, and um, something I didn't cover in the demo there is that um, to to sort of emulate what I've just shown you there doesn't require um, tagging of InDesign articles. It doesn't require any pre-production, any change in that workflow. Um, you can actually set those rules up on the fly in Canvas Flow. It's nice. To publish it, pick it up, and we're shortly introducing um, a template solution as well, so you can push into a specific template. So. Um, it's really interesting to see um, the conversations we're having with clients on how automated you get that sort of um, sort of 90-95% mm -hmm. automation, but you then have that ability to play around and, and, and enrich and yeah. style. And, uh, and again, all of the styling tools, the fonts, the colors, and all of that layout is, is um, sort of accessible to the, I guess, like business user. It's, it's not a requirement for the IT team no. to come in and start back-end JavaScript developing and CSS, it's something that can be done through the editor, through in Canvas Flow, so you get a lot of a lot of control. So do you almost exclusively see designers using this? Is, is that the main operator of Canvas Flow? Uh, I mean, um, again, we've got we've got a full uh, sort of cross different different types of people using it. Yeah. Um, in, in many ways, once the, the designs are set up and the templates that can, uh, are set up, again, much in exactly the same way as I've just shown you in the way in which you build content, how you build templates, how you apply styling. Once they're set up, it's a case of, um, I guess, content author is just coming in and um, either adding that content on the fly through the uh, through the uh, web interface or yeah. pushing from one or more sources. Um, yeah. And then again, in, in addition to pushing out to um, to the, the page suite app, um, Canvas will generate those other feeds, so social channels, Apple News, yeah. um, email campaigns, um, uh, amongst a, a, a number of other. Uh, uh, I would add as well to that that I think designers are probably the, the, the people that get it the quickest and right. see the value of it as well. You know? Yeah. So, so that's always nice to see. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely on the on the designer side there. One quick question before we go on to the, the summary. Actually, We're, when you're bringing a new client on board, do you ever so analytics might suggest that actually they only have a low percentage of tablet users or desktop users. Would you would you recommend to them actually you can stay with something low touch? Um, for the bigger devices, but actually, if you're going to spend time, spend it on the mobile version. Do you, do you have people that literally will just look at the data and only make adjustments based on the the, the larger pool of um, readers, or do you do most people who utilise Canvas Flow do the change for every single type of device type that's available? I, I think the beauty is there's that flexibility there. You yeah. know, if you prioritise speed of production, yeah. then you know we can build in as much automation as possible. Yeah. But you know, if you have the resource available and your priority is really to build the kind of you know the the, the, the strongest and most designed experience possible, yeah. then you have the flexibility to do that as well. And we we kind of see a bit of both really. It's just whatever the priorities of that publishing house or that brand or yeah. and what the audience demands. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think it's it's an evolution in in a way because it's um, once you you've got that process in place and yeah. you're producing that content, you're outputting it, you then have that opportunity to enhance that content. And whether yeah. that's to um, uh, start to try and charge for that content or whether it's to uh, reach a wider um, audience, you know, that flexibility um, exists. But yeah, it's an interesting interesting question as to where do you draw the line in automation and sort of putting touch. that design and touch and feel, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, what we'll do is we'll go back into the presentation now and appreciate everybody's efforts on the demos what we've got is our summary section so I would sort of suggest now that if you've got any questions um, for, for, for any of us here start asking them because we'll be moving on to that shortly so essentially in summary um, what the combination of page and canvas flow allows you to do is deliver an optimized content experience experience with the most efficient workflows into creating the most beautiful and intuitive products possible. There are pre-built templates available. Um, PageSuite is a SaaS-based solution. Is, is Canvas Flow SaaS-based as well? Yes. yes yeah, yeah, perfect. So that's how we get started. You touched on earlier that, that you've got tutorials, there's help in terms of setup um, and onboarding is, is quite intuitive. We're the same here at PageSuite. You know, if you need um, help or expertise or training, um, we would implore you to sort of get in contact with uh, with any of the people on the webinar here and we can assist you with that. Editorial and production teams um, will have more time compared to 
potentially utilizing some of the more older solutions such as Adobe DPS and maybe some of the other more custom solutions in the market from a cam flow perspective and that will mean potentially reduce um, cost or as stressed earlier the ability for your uh, designers or editorial teams to actually use their talents to add the value and create content rather than more meaningless operational or uh, tagging based things that obviously you don't really want to be spending doing. The output from a page perspective can be onto the app and web but Canvas Flow has also got additional outputs too and um, you'd also be working um, with a team of people who've got the expertise to not only deliver some of these great products that you've seen here today but also part of the strategic side around that as well so if you wanted to have subscriptions integrated as part of this advertising or other third parties you can have the complete digital strategy delivered alongside these optimized products i think ben it's also worth noting on the subscription side that it's possible to set up a um, uh, a subscription just for your canvas fly edition so you could have a page suite edition or a replica that was uh, free to read maybe with advertising in it but then you could lock down your canvas flow edition nice and you could put that behind a paywall great okay that's i mean that's really interesting as well isn't it so you yeah. can have sort of a diversified business model within the same product yeah exactly uh, anything that you guys wanted to add at this stage if not we're going to be jumping straight through to our yeah, Q I, I, I would just like to add that you know we we recognize the importance of um, InDesign in a, in a print first workflow, but a number of customers or, or a number of publishers are still trying to use InDesign to create mobile first content. Yeah, and that just really isn't the right way to do it. You know, so that, that that's why our InDesign plugin exists. You know, because we recognize that importance. We're trying to make it easy for people to get it out of something and into Canvas Flow, where that is. You could almost think of it as like the InDesign for creating mobile content, really. You know, yeah. it's the right tool for the job. Yeah. So that's kind of a point that I really wanted to make there as well. And, and hopefully that helps people understand the true value of it as well. Yeah. And I, I, even just some of the small features and functions that you showed us um, truly demonstrate that actually that solution over maybe something else is, is, the, is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's some, the reason why you're in business, right? It's the way you reason sure, you create sure. the product. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes it's just a case of being able to demonstrate to people the. You know, rather than trying to hack existing workflows, yeah. you know, use the right tools for the job, you know, and, yeah. and, and have that kind of courage to, to change and switch and just see for yourself what it's like. We offer free demos anyway, so there's nothing to lose, you know. Yeah, and, yeah we, we, and we've seen some really interesting use cases where publishers can step away from producing that print version, that mobile version, that tablet version, um, translation into different languages. I mean, all that stuff takes a huge amount of time. Yeah. It occurs in that single version, immediately responsive, heavily optimized, and you get the benefits of all of those extra media components and interactive elements um, and then yeah with you know with a single push out to page three you know what, what's not so good. you've almost got a little bit of a barrier that's over the past 10 years production people editorial teams and designers have used some pretty labor intensive tools and they yeah, might already great point, they yeah. might be in their mind thinking oh no is this another one of those but exactly yeah exactly yeah. yeah that's a great point because you know i've seen that myself people have had their fingers burned by kind of yeah. you know being early adopters of some of those kind of solutions that we yeah. all know have gone before yeah uh, and um, you know we've really built Canvas Flow from the ground up to be smart and intuitive, and 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 you know we've spoken to so many different publishers about the kind of tool set that they need and require in order to be able to create really strong reader experiences, and that and that's what we're trying to deliver. And as Christian touched on before, is that you know you know we know what the popular platforms are at the moment, but what yeah. they're going to be this time next year, this time next week, who knows? With 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 Canvas Flow in in the sort of centre of that production. That adding that new channel on is no more work. You don't have to delve back into a new ecosystem. Yeah. It's add a connector and push it out again. Yeah. Um, so it gives you that sort of flexibility going forward as well. Uh, well, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, so what, yeah, yeah, what's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. the next big thing? Indeed. Well, we know that more content is consumed on mobile than anywhere else. You know, we also understand that. You know, some sometimes uh, print products are still creating more revenue for for publishers than anything else, but that still represents an enormous opportunity. Um, so we just want to give people the tools to be able to capitalize on that. Okay, so thank you very much. We are now on our Q&A section. So if you've got any questions, there's still enough time to answer those. And what I will do is pull these up. We actually touched on this earlier. Could you have a mix of replica and canvas flow curated content within the native or web app? I think the Quick answer that was yes, was it? Then? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Question number two: Roughly, how long would it take to curate an edition using the Canvas Flow toolset? And the suggestion here is, if I have a fifty-page magazine, but if you've got any other examples, 
How long's uh, a piece of string? Long, no, well, yeah, right. so to an extent, um, it really depends on the type of content. Um, in terms of a sort of a, an InDesign push, really depends on the, the type of content you're pushing across. Uh, the plugin at the moment lends itself really well to sort of editorial content. We've got clients um, using this that has essentially um, sort of 95% to 100% automation. Wow. Uh, others in a more sort of design orientated. Um, yeah. You know, want us to invest a little bit more time but you know our objective here is to be in this on 90% automation um, but it's really sort of look at the content but um, I guess to your demo point you'd implore people to maybe send have a look with their existing magazine content and try it out and absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah yeah like we said earlier you know it depends on what your priorities are if it's speed of production then you know it can it can be you know rapid yeah but, um, yeah, I think it's worth adding there that sort of out of the box, the Canvas Flow plugin will, will take your content, it will process it. There are no compatibility issues, there are no requirements for tagging <laughs> any kind of structure. Yeah. Um, within the Canvas Flow platform, you can then define your own rules and add, add those and documentation on that. Um, and then I guess the next stage from there is us writing additional rules to say actually we can take it from 80 to 100% of these rules. So, um, yeah, really interesting conversations. I'm very happy to look at content. Another question, is it possible to use Canvas Flow to create a custom style front page of an edition, but then use feed-driven templates for the rest of the edition and the article pages? That's the same sort of question as mixing the two together, really. So yeah, that's something we're looking at. Um, we're looking at introducing that in the in the sense that I think it's quite similar to an Apple News style of, of magazine, where you have like quite an interactive front page just to grab readers' with attention, but then you can use that feed content later on. Um, so yeah, that's something we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at developing at the moment, actually. Do you have any special rates, or are you looking for any launch partners? Um, yeah, one for me, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say um, you know, talk to us. That's the most important thing. Talk yeah. to us. Our pricing is very transparent. It's on our website. You can see it. Uh, our plans are our plans. But by opening up a conversation with us, we can at least make sure that you're on the right plan. You're not spend. You're not paying for something that you're not getting. You know. And yeah, we're absolutely looking for launch partners. Um, you know, we can't wait to get started with Page Suite. So if you're interested in, in joining that program, speak to us uh, and we'll get you on board and we'll certainly work out something that, that, that works well for everybody. Yeah, Page Suite will support that in whatever way is possible as well. So from a Page Suite perspective, um, you know, we're looking to get some magazines or some newspapers utilizing this in an interesting way so that, it, you know, maybe in 2020, there's an opportunity to showcase the rest of the market what good stuff's happening. Fantastic, yeah. Is it possible to have a connection with a pre-press service going into a flat plan? Uh, we do We do actually have a, an integration um, with, a, with a service like that. So so yes, um, you can essentially feed out to your print and into Canvas Flow. Um, so yeah, if you've got um, got questions on that, please do. Uh, get yeah, we've, we, yeah, we've just recently um, got another partnership. So we've got a great solution for that, actually. So we'd be more than happy to, to talk to anybody about that, give them more information if they want to get Interesting. in touch. Yeah. yeah, really nice development, actually. Yeah. yeah. Movie, you could, you could like flip reverse it. You could take a digital first brand into the print environment. Uh, well, it's been, been mentioned. Interesting, yeah, it's yeah. been yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. OK, so, um, you know, Without question, it's been a really interesting webinar for, for me. I hope you've all found it interesting too. You know, big thanks to Canvas Flow for um, presenting and talking us through what their solution is. There's some good good opportunities here to get involved as well. Um, I think from everybody here, that is a thank you very much and um, speak to you soon. If you have any further questions or you would like to get in touch, here's some information. I'm sure you can also find each and every one of us on LinkedIn, um, email us at hello at page suite or sales at canvasflow.io and we'll be in touch very soon. Yeah, thanks for your time, everybody. Very much appreciated. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.